What's up, BookTube? Sandy Golson here with a return of a video that I've gotten away from in recent months, but I'm looking forward to getting back into a little bit more, fingers crossed, here and into the future, and that is my reading wrap-up. And there's gonna be a lot of months to wrap up, but maybe not quite as much reading as normal, but I'm still looking forward to bringing that to you next. Okay, first of all, right off the rip, I'm getting used to having braces in my mouth. So I am trying to get used to that and get used to the initial, uh, you know, discomfort of having braces in my mouth. So if I talk kind of weird, then that's probably the reason, um, or it could be just that, um, I don't know, maybe I'm just weird. I don't know, but whatever it is, is whatever it is. So I'm excited though, to get back into doing my reading wrap ups here. And it's been, I had to go back and look it up. It's been since, uh, I wrapped up the month of January that I last did a reading wrap up. So I'm getting back into it here with a couple of uh, books right off the bat that um, one, I'm too lazy to go and find the physical copy of the book. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one right up here and the other that I did as an ebook. So that's where that is. The first one I'm gonna start off with is Greenwich Park by Katherine Faulkner. And this is a fun book to read because this is the uh, um, idealistic or idyllic housewife who is pregnant and seems to have everything going for her, but it's really, you know, kind of a little bit lonely and is really struggling with some things. And then she goes to this prenatal class and she runs into a uh, mysterious person that kind of um, hooks her and she becomes interested and they kind of get this fast bond going but not all that glitters is gold. And so she finds out that there is something going on here that others actually see first. And then she starts to kind of pick up on it that there's something uh, a little bit more sinister that's going on. And so this is the kind of story that I really get into. I really like reading these types of stories because uh, I like that um, um, vulnerability element where the mysterious person comes in and they kind of really change the dynamic of everything. And then there's some kind of hidden motive that's going on that you get to see uh, unveil itself over the course of the book. So really enjoyed that one. Next up is a book that I've had for a long time and I finally got around to reading it. I read it mostly through uh, an audiobook, but I still enjoyed it nonetheless. Uh, even though uh, sometimes with audiobooks, um, sometimes they work for me and sometimes they don't. In this case, it did work for me, as it did with uh, Greenwich Park, too. And that is Live Wire by Harlan Coben. Now, uh, when I really started to get back into reading many, many years ago, uh, Harlan Coben was one of the authors that I really picked up. I started with One False Move by Harlan Coben, and that really got me into it. And that was part of his Myron Bolitar series. And this one is also part of that series as well. So this is a fun one. Uh, it has to do with a celebrity couple and uh, questionable paternity that comes up through a social media post that really stark, sparks up this uh, this kind of mystery that uh, our, our uh, main character, Myron, has to solve. And so uh, it was fun to really read. Uh, you know, I kind of go for the, the celebrity couple thing. Uh, the uh, main character, she was a tennis star. And so that was a lot of fun too, to, to get into that part of it, because I am a sports guy. So I really enjoyed that part of it too. Fun story, fun Myron Bolitar story. I read a lot of those uh, stories from Harlan Coben, really enjoyed it. So it was a good, quick, fun read. Next up is Kobe Bryant and the Pursuit of Immortality, The Rise by Mike Selisky. Um, this is of course about the late great star, basketball star Kobe Bryant. And um, this was um, a really a powerful read. Uh, it started off a little bit different than what I expected. It started off with uh, kind of reactions to, um, to Kobe's death, but then it goes back and it kind of gives you the path that Kobe took to get where he is. And you really get an opportunity to understand what he was really all about, what drove him, what pushed him, what made him have that edge that really helped him to be successful. But at the same time, made people maybe not like him quite as much, but it really uh, gives some great insight to one of the greatest basketball players that ever played, Kobe Bryant. Next up is the classic Native Son by Richard Wright. Um, this has to do with a um, kind of a, a Jim Crow era piece uh, that has to do with racism and um, a, a crime that happens um, and uh, the racism that surrounds that crime uh, from the main character that's featured in this. Uh, it's, a, it's a tough read, but it's a really 
uh, important read and it's one that I've had. Actually, I actually have a couple different copies of this uh, because I, I just saw a meme about this too that uh, uh, it was like, I never have I ever. And it was, uh, one of them was, uh, bought another copy of a book that you already had but you forgot that you had and this is one of those books so um this is actually the second i think this is the second one i bought uh i saw it on sale and picked it up and so uh, i was uh in the moment i thought man i need to get that that sounds really good and then i got back in the car and i'm like you know i think i might already have a copy of this then i got home and i confirmed I already had a copy of this, but I'm glad that I read it uh, finally. It was a really good and powerful book to read. Uh, Richard Wright was a, just a tremendous, tremendous writer and, and the things that he wrote about, uh, so, so important. Even today, even though this story takes back, takes place, you know, like a hundred years ago, um, it's still important even today to read this type of story to really understand what it was like then and contrast it to what it's like now. Next up is The Next Person You Meet in Heaven by Mitch Albom. This is a follow-up, uh, a sequel to The Five People You Meet in Heaven, and I really enjoyed that book. Uh, Mitch Albom books, uh, if you're not familiar with them, they're a very quick read. Uh, they're usually very powerfully written. They get right to the point, not a lot of you know junk in them. They just really tell a good story, gets in there, gets you out, really fast with something that's going to last with you for a long time. And this follow-up to the story was was just um, tr tremendously good. Um, it, um, it talks about, really, it focuses on death and the things that we reflect on um, about the meaning the meaningfulness of our lives and 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 how do we determine what was meaningful and and you start to think of am i making an impact on people uh do the people that i have engaged with do they really find value in me do they really love me do they really care about me did i make a difference in their lives did i make a difference period and these two books by mitch album really help you to kind of dig through that as you learn about the stories of the two main characters in these two books. And so a very, very powerful read, very fast read, highly recommend this. Next up is The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. And I uh, read the guest list, which I thought was a great, great concept. And I read it and it was, it was cool. Actually, it's right here too, uh, behind me. I, I uh, thought it was a really cool story. So I was really excited about it. It had a lot of characters. It was a lot to keep up with, but it was a fun story and I enjoyed it. So when this came up, um, I was very intrigued by the story. Um, it, it just sounded really, really interesting. Um, so it, it uh, again, it's a thriller. It's a, a missing person thriller and uh, a mystery to solve uh, uh, in the Paris apartment. And it really, it, it reminded me a little bit of, um, uh, it kind of reminded me a little bit of Lock Every Door by Riley Sager, a little bit of that going on. And so uh, that helped intrigue me even more about picking this one up. I really enjoyed it. Uh, Lucy Foley has a little bit of a different writing style. Um, and so sometimes it takes a little a little bit to get going and you really have to pay attention to things that are happening in Lucy Foley's stories. But if you do, you really enjoy her writing and the not only the, the types of stories that she tells, but you'll really have a greater appreciation for her writing style. Next up is For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing. Uh, this takes place in uh, a boarding school. So those of you who know me uh, know that uh, I'm, a little bit of a weakness for uh, boarding school stories. Uh, and it has a sinister character who seems perfect and seems to be doing everything right, but actually has a very, very evil side and is doing some evil and even manipulative things. And it has to be solved. And uh, you get the perspective of the, the evildoer quite a bit in the story, which makes it kind of interesting as you work your way toward the end and you start to see how the pieces come together and the manipulation that's taking place. So. Um, an interesting way of telling a story, very interesting, very compelling. Once I started reading it, it was almost impossible for me to put this down. Very, very fun read. Um, I have The Lovely Wife by this author and I have not, excuse me, My Lovely Wife by this author and I have not read it yet, but I'm still intrigued to read it. The only reason I haven't read it yet is because um, I said this before in another video, I was watching, or excuse me, reading 
uh, the the um, the uh, comments of a book and it gave away the ending. As I was trying to find out more information, this is why sometimes I don't like reading the comments of a book before I've actually read it because what happens is sometimes they will give something away uh, without indicating that you could be reading a spoiler. So for your own good, was very good. Next up is The Secret Game by Scott Ellsworth. And this is a historical piece that has to do with um, a forbidden game that was played during Jim Crow era uh, in the South, in North Carolina, uh, between white and black teams and kind of all the things that happened leading up to it during and after The Secret Game. I've heard about The Secret Game and I always wanted to, to learn more about it, about these two uh, teams that, that finally connected, that got it together. And uh, it was a lot of, I don't wanna say it was a lot of fun to read, but it was a powerful read and I'm glad I read it because it really, I, first of all, I wanna read more nonfiction and uh, this period in our country's history was very intriguing. And you know, again, I'm a sports guy, so I really, really enjoyed reading this important piece of history, a story that's really sadly very rarely talked about. Next up is They'll Never Catch Us by Jessica Goodman. This was a really fun story to read. Um, two uh, athletes in high school, the Steckler sisters, uh, who are, are very different and yet very similar in some ways, a little kind of a rivalry that's going on there. And then uh, a mysterious, I shouldn't say mysterious, but then a new figure comes in and kind of upsets the dynamic within the team, the cross country team and then it, it starts to create these factions and then the new person ends up dead and who did it and so there is an investigation and then there's so there's a lot of like detective work that's going on there's some media stuff that's going on with the media attention and then there's a mystery that needs to be solved so this is a lot of fun this is a very fast read went through it very quickly characters are live and in color uh, really jump out at you um, you really get a feel for their personalities and so very good work here by jessica goodman Next up is What's Mine and Yours by Naima Koster. Hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, this was an interesting story uh, to me because it has to do with race, identity, integration, um, and schools. And so you know that there's a lot of stuff that's going on there that really is going to uh, cut like a knife for some people. It's gonna uh, be right in your face uh, with the kind of topics that are going on. And so um, there's, um, um, not only the, the racial dynamic, there's an ethnicity dynamic, um, there's a denial about things that, that are going on, that are actually going on, uh, and a lot of times denial can be for self-protection against something that you just don't wanna confront, that you're just not ready to confront for one reason or another. Uh, but this was a lot of fun to read about uh, a situation that was going on in North Carolina, and so uh, I was glad I picked it up. It really had some intriguing stuff that was going on, and. Uh, the kinds of things that, uh, even though this is, uh, I believe, set in the 1990s, it's stuff that's still going on even today in terms of uh, segregated communities and sometimes the overlap of those communities and the friction that can kind of come about, uh, even today in 2022. Uh, and then you talk about here in the 1990s and then going back to the 80s and the 70s. Um, there are just so many things, that were, and in the 60s too, uh, where there was integration was really starting to take shape, probably more so in the early 1970s uh, of these certain school districts, not all, but certain school districts. And so uh, this was a very interesting read for me. Lots going on here. Very, very enjoyable read. Next up is The Advantage by Patrick Lencioni. And Patrick Lencioni is uh, both nonfiction and fiction. And so he tells a nonfiction uh, part of his uh, work uh, by using fiction to really uh, give you kind of a practical example, a real life example with real life emotions. And then he gives you solutions, of course, at the end. Uh, the subtitle is Why Organizational Health trumps everything else in business. And so um, he talks about the impediments to organizational health. Uh, so with an organization, whether that's your community, whether that's your athletic team, whether that's your, um, uh, your, 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 your side business team or whatever it is. Um, and I'm gonna read this sentence. Lencioni makes the case that there is no better way to achieve profound improvement in an organization than by attacking the root causes of dysfunction politics and confusion. And so uh, Patrick Lencioni again knocks it out of the park. Uh, his books I, I have found tremendously helpful in terms of professional development uh, to understand things um, in, in, a, in with, with, through that fictional story uh, and then giving you the nonfiction part along with this, the, the things that help you think through the situation and then the solutions 
uh, he gives you and he helps you to work through to find your own solutions as well. So again, uh, home run by Patrick Lencioni again, the advantage. Next up is one of my pre-orders and that is I Kiss Shara Wheeler by Casey McQuiston. Uh, I really enjoyed this one. There's a lot going on in this one. There's a mystery, a girl that disappears, a girl who's kissed a few people, she's left some notes. Uh, people are trying to figure out what was her motive for why she did what she did and the people that she kissed, they band together to try to figure out what's going on, what happened to Shara, uh, and it, the mystery it really uh, is about, there's a lot of things going on. There's, there's a racial dynamic, uh, there's a class dynamic, there's a, um, uh, a pressure to perform dynamic that's in there. There's LGBTQ plus dynamic as well. So there's a ton going on in this book. This was a very highly anticipated book from uh, earlier this year. I think I pre-ordered it in like January and or maybe even December. And uh, when I got it, I was really excited to jump into it. Very good read. A lot of people are really buzzing about this book. I Kiss Char Wheeler. Very, very good book. Uh, I am definitely interested in reading more from this author. Next up is Time Will Tell by Barry Liga. Uh, this was a fun book. Uh, uh, there is a little bit of a challenge with this book in the sense that there's a lot of characters and there's multiple timelines. And so that can make it a little bit difficult. You might have to take some notes to make sure you can keep up carefully with the characters uh, to really get the full experience of what's going on here. But it has to do with a time capsule that's buried. And uh, then uh, when the time capsule is unearthed, uh, there is evidence that points to a murder that may have been committed and so the kids who discover the time capsule have to uh, learn more about not only themselves where they came from but they also have to learn about their parents who uh, participated in assembling and burying this time capsule that is filled with more than your typical time capsule items there is a tremendous mystery that has to be solved in this one. So fun read, glad I picked it up. Um, I saw it and it really appealed to me. Lots going on here that I really enjoyed. And uh, again, it's a little bit of a longer book, but it was a fun book to read. Lastly is All American Boys by Jason Reynolds and Brendan Kiley. Um, this was a very, um, very timely piece to read. Um, you can see uh, the hands up right there with uh, looks like the police lights right there. Uh, it has to do with uh, white, black, an incident that happens, um, graffiti that tells part of a story, and um, the cops. And so there's a lot going on in this story, uh, trying to understand each other in terms of cultures, you know, different cultures, different races, understanding where people are coming from, and, and, and how we see things is largely based on our own experiences, our own race, our own culture, uh, probably more culture than race, but that dictates a lot of how we see things. And so this was a very um, powerful book to read and I'm glad I finally got around to it. I had it for a while uh, and I, I finally got uh, into it and uh, primarily listening to it through uh, an audio book. But this is, this is really a, a powerful, powerful read. Um, highly recommend it. Great collaboration here uh, to, to get different perspectives as well as another, it's not the first time I've read a book like this with two authors and they come with two different perspectives to help you really see an issue from different perspectives uh, to help you maybe even understand your biases as you see that um, incident through different lenses. And so uh, very, very important book. Glad I read it. All American Boys, Jason Reynolds, Brendan Kiley. All right, so that wraps it up. Very long video here. I summed up, as I mentioned earlier, the months of February, March, April and May. So lots going on here. Hopefully I'll get back onto my regular monthly rotation with these wrap up videos. Hope you had a lot of fun. Uh, if you made it this far, uh, you could do me a solid, hit the like button. Uh, if you're not a subscriber and uh, you're interested in these types of books and others that I did not necessarily get to uh, in these last few months, then hit that subscribe button as well. And I'll see you for more content in the future.